Today I've got 10 summer tear tray DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. So for tear tray DIY number one. We're going to start off with the little globe that comes from Dollar Tree and they have two different uh, sizes that I have seen and I'm going to use the smallest one because this will be on the tiered tray we want to have room. I'm going to use some of this grass that's on a mat or it's moss on a mat. Then I'm going to use some roses and little picks and some foam. Now I'm just going to use my little heat gun here and I'm going to remove my label. If you use this or a hair dryer, it's going to let that glue kind of loosen up and it'll come right off. See now we have two pieces. I'm going to use my metal ruler here to just cut this styrofoam ball and just a piece big enough to glue onto the bottom of that little circle. So it looks almost like a little heel. This is just an easy way for me to do it. Um, you can do this any way you want to. Use your X-Acto knife or just cut it with scissors. We we'll use what we have. So I know this is going to fit and it's going to be the perfect size. I'm going to use some of this green chalk paint. I think this is moss. And I'm going to go all over the base. I go over the outside here. I'm also going to get on the top and all in the crack there so that you don't see any of the brown when this project is complete. You can use any color you like. If you like a more modern look, you can use white or black. That would be pretty too. And then I'm just going to dry this quickly. And I'm going to take a little hot glue. It's best if you use a cool temperature. You can see mine is smoking hot, literally. Um, but we're going to adjust that shortly. I'm just going to glue it down on there. And I want to be sure that there's room around the edges because we have to put that top back on, that uh, cloche or that dome. So I'm going to use this sheet moss and kind of get an idea of how big it needs to be. And then I will trim it down with my small scissors. This not exact thing, you know, you don't have to be perfect with this. You could always trim it down a little bit more or add to it if you cut it too small. And then this looks about right. So now, put it on a low temperature. You don't want to burn your fingers because we're going to be handling this quite a bit. In order to get this to fit, I'm going to cut some little slices in here just so that I can overlap it and there won't be any buckling or wrinkles. So I like using notches for this type of circular um, project. I'm going to put a little glue in the middle, careful not to burn your fingers, because that backing right there is just like, um, it's like a plastic grid. So if you get some from the Dollar Tree, then it's probably going to have the same type of backing. So protect your fingers where you can. And then I'm just going to work on opposite sides from each other and place these little flaps down that I have created. That's going to give a nice, smooth, unlumpy finish. But you can see here that I've overlapped my moss onto the crack where we have to put it back down. So I'm just simply going to take my scissors and trim it off. I'm using an alcohol wipe to clean this. You can use soap and water or some glass cleaner, whatever you want to use, just to get the fingerprints and everything off of it. I'm going to trim down a piece of my little rose bush here. And you need to make sure that the top is going to fit. Make sure that the height is correct. You can measure it against the dome. And you also need to make sure that it's not too thick on top because once you put the dome on, it's going to close it together. It's going to pinch it together somewhat. So I'm just adding just a little bit of greenery to it. Simple. You can certainly use some glue and add around the base if you want to. And then I decided to add this little bird in here. I got these at the thrift store and I thought, you know what, let's put a little bird under there. This is the summertime and he's looking for some reprieve from the heat. And I think this one looks like a better fit to scale. So we're just going to hide him right underneath there. Yep, that'll do. 
and it's a little surprise when you turn it around. I love it. So I'm going to poke everything on the inside, place the dome back down, and lock it into place. And I think this is really cute. This type of thing is really nice to put on the top of a tiered tray if you don't have like the little handle that comes off. If you have a flat surface on the top, this is a really cute topper for that. Today I am very happy to be working with Jackie from Crafting and Mimi's World. She contacted me and asked me would I be interested in doing a collaboration with her. So we're doing summer tiered tray DIYs. Jackie is very crafty. Her style is similar to mine. It's rustic and she just does a little bit of everything. See there she is using that same greenery I used. Tiered tray DIY number two. I'm going to use these stickers that came from Dollar Tree. It's just some little uh, greenery fern pieces, you know, um, flower petals and things like that, or leaves. That's even better. There are two of these little frames here. I'm going to use the smaller one, but if you have a large tear tray, you can certainly use the bigger one. Whatever's going to work for you. You can pull these two pieces of plastic out, take the center out very easily, and then just add these down. And this is going to look like pressed greenery. Use as much as little or as little as you like. If you're careful with these, you can reposition them. I actually did move them around a little bit before I got my final result. But be very careful when you take them off that you don't pull them apart. I like this look. I live in the south in the country. We get an early summer and it lasts a very long time and we have lots of wild ferns growing in the woods beside our house and they are absolutely gorgeous so it definitely reminds me of summer nice you could also use the pressed flower stickers if you would like they have those two but i haven't seen them yet sorry about that glare tear tray diy number three these are thrifted pieces but you can get them at, you know, any place that you thrift. You can probably get something similar at the Dollar Tree. I'm not certain. We're going to use a little water. We're going to use a brush, some pit berry, some masking tape, antiquing wax. I'm going to mix just a few drops of that antiquing wax into a little bit of water. And it may be a half a teaspoon. I'm going to mix it up and we're going to make a stain with this. I've just laid it down on my little paper. As we're recycling that, we're going to use it to um, save a little bit of money and save our tabletop. I'm just going to brush all into the little shutters here. These probably came off of some type of a dollhouse project. I'm just showing you the difference in the two colors. If you wanted to leave it plain, you can. I prefer a little rustic look, so I like giving it a little bit of a depth and a little color here. So we're going to let them dry. And this is how they look. They dry a little bit lighter. So now to get these together, we're going to use the masking tape as somewhat of a hinge on the back. You're not going to see it. There's a little space between the two shutters. And the more space you leave, the bigger of a fold you will get. And I'll show you that in just a minute. You'll see what I mean. You see how I'm putting a little space there? Now, just that little bit of space is going to give you just a little bit of bend. And then you can, if you like just like that, that's fine. If you like more of a bend, open that space up a little bit. So you're going to need something to help stand it up. You can use a regular Jenga block or you can use these little building blocks from Dollar Tree. I'm going to go ahead, once I get this at the right uh, fold, the right degrees, I'm going to add a little hot glue in there so that it will stay in that position. And I did adjust it. Now you can see it will stand up on its own, but I'm going to give it a little support anyway. And I'm just going to use a little extra support from one little block in the back right on top of that fold. And that's going to give me a little more support. So I'm going to take this pit berry and you know, it comes in a long string. You can it's wired so you can reposition it. So I've folded it down, twisted it around into a little wreath to give you an idea of what you can use if you wanted to decorate your little doors 
with that. I decided that I wanted to use a sign and I have not used this calendar yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. I love this little, looks kitcheny to me, like a kitchen. So maybe those are pantry doors, who knows? I'm gonna cut it down off the back of that calendar and then I'm gonna trim it out on a piece of this uh, cardboard. And this actually came out of the calendar. I like to reuse all kinds of things. I'm gonna take a thin ribbon and you can get these at the Dollar Tree now. You could use jute if you would like, whichever way you wanna do it. Because I want this to be kind of freestanding and I wanted to, I don't know. I like the look of it instead of gluing it right down to it to make it look like maybe it is actually hung from the door. So I'm just gonna glue it onto the top back and then when we lift it up, ta-da. We have a little hanging sign from our pantry door in our kitchen. What about that? And it also reminds me of the outdoors, so it's perfect. Do you garden? Do you like to make a vegetable garden in the summer? Tiered Tray DIY number four. Okay, this is gonna be a little birdhouse. This is a little thrifted house form. These little birds are thrifted. I got a big package of birds and leaves, butterflies, frogs, all kinds of goodies. This is a little bit of the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, and then I'm gonna use a pick. Using a baby wipe and a little bit of that antiquing wax, I'm just gonna rub this together and then rub it all over this little form. Be sure when you thrift that you really give your items a good cleaning. You don't know what kind of dust and bacteria you're bringing home, so be sure you clean it. That is already done. And then now on my clean dry surface, I'm adding the stain. It's gonna warm it up. It's gonna take that orangey look down a bit. And I like it. I wanna give it a backing. I'm gonna make this look somewhat like a little birdhouse. So I'm going to cut this piece down and it fits perfectly so that we can add some hot glue. And it will look like it belongs there. I love Dollar Tree ribbon and I just love Dollar Tree crafting items. They have really got some good stuff. Even with the price increase, I've found that I'm still finding, you know, they're bringing new things in the store and I'm very happy about that. Now I'm just gonna trim off what I don't need along the bottom and on the top because the back is already perfectly fit. And this is how it's gonna look before we put our little birds in there. Nice. Almost looks like a screen door or some chicken wire, doesn't it? Now I'm gonna use some jute and we're gonna make some little bird nest. Just twirling it around my fingers, twisting it into you know, not tied, but somewhat of a little knot. It kind of sticks to itself because it's fuzzy. And then I'm gonna decide where I want my little bird nest to be. One in the top corner. And just press that down. Watch your fingers, wear your protectors if you need to. Remember, cool temperature glue so you're more safe. And I'm gonna take the biggest bird and put him right in the top corner. These birds could be painted if you wanted to. It's almost like a plaster, like maybe somebody had done a project because it was a bag full of them and maybe someone made these, handmade them. They just never got around to doing anything with them, but they're very happy in my craft supply because I have been using them like crazy and I love them. Look how sweet the little bird is in the corner. Oh, they're so cute. I love little birdies. They're so cute and graceful and they're just sweet. I love to watch them. Now just take whatever pick that you like. Pull these apart. They can be trimmed down. I like this because it looks like grass. And I like the grassy look. You know, not all birds nest in trees. Some of them actually nest on the ground. Birds, not just ducks. Some regular old birds like to nest on the ground. But we wanna give them a little bit of security and privacy. So we're gonna add some grass here and there. 
I'm going to trim the pieces up so that I get exactly the length that I want and the look that I want. You know, Dollar Tree has a lot of really nice greenery this uh, spring and summer. I have noticed they have fern pieces. They have, I think they had eucalyptus. I know they even have olive branches. They are really nice. I've seen them. I haven't bought them. But, yeah, they're really, really nice. Most of my greenery comes from the thrift store. I'm blessed with a very, very good um, Goodwill bins. And I get so much from there. But even if you don't have exactly what I have, you can go and find something that you like. My channel is all about making it my own and you make it your own exactly how you like it. I think most of us crasp crafters want to give you inspiration, you know, but you don't have to do it exactly like we do it. Just watch, enjoy it, get inspired, take away from it what brings you joy and what is helpful to you and just leave the rest, right? So the last little bird has got to go on top. She's not on her nest right now. Maybe she's a baby and she's learning to fly. So right on the top, perfect. This is such a sweet little birdhouse and it fits very nicely onto your tray. To your tray DIY, number five. We're halfway there, y'all. I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying my video. Okay, we're gonna use these mushrooms that I got during the fall from Dollar Tree. This is a thrifted basket, a little block, some more of that greenery we just used, some foam, and a little scrap of that moss. We got some wax here as well. Now I want this basket to stand on its own. So I'm just gonna go right to the base of the basket and put this block here so that it kind of sits slightly at an angle. And this will do it. Now we're going to measure and cut down a piece of foam. Because this bowl, this, well, this basket it has graduated edges, I'm going to make it a little more narrow in the back and a little wider in the front for the base of where we're going to put our mushrooms. Then I'm going to measure my grass. I'm going to put my well, it's moss. I'm going to put the moss down. I keep calling it grass. And then I'm going to glue that down, which I should have done in the first place, but I got carried away. You know how it is sometimes when an idea hits you and you're just going with the flow. Well, I just kind of went with the flow. All right, so now that's glued down. We're going to glue along here because I don't want to see any of that foam. I want this to be right to the edge of our little basket. Trim off the excess. Now we're going to color our mushrooms. So you can color these any way you want, but a very common mushroom is a mushroom that has a brown cap on the top and a kind of a cream colored stem. And so the bottom of it is already done. That's the way it is when they put it in the bag. Then I'm just going to color the top. And to me that looks perfectly like a natural mushroom. Little hot glue and then place these wherever you like. Um, in my experience, from what I've seen, mushrooms grow in groups. They grow in clusters. So I'm going to cluster mine on one side of this basket. I got the first two down and I colored four, but I'm not gonna use the fourth one. I'm just gonna use three. And since there's a slant right here, I'm gonna put him off to a slant just a little bit. It gives a little interest in this cute. It's cute just like it is so far. But following the same technique that I used with our little birdhouse, I'm going to add a little bit of greenery to the outside of this. All of this really, it's eye catching. It's interesting. You know, it gives your eye something to move around and over. And I think it's just so adorable. These picks from Dollar Tree, fantastic. Love them, recommend them. They have so many different styles of greenery just on that one pick. You can pull it apart and use it on several different projects. For $1.25, you really can't beat that. I love this dusty look. Tiered tray DIY number six. Okay, there's that greenery bouquet again. We're gonna use some mini pots. You can use this kind or the other kind, whatever you have. I'm gonna use some blocks. 
some foam, and this little palette sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to start off with my plaster paint and I am going to coat this down in my chalk paint. All in the cracks, all over the sides, and then I'm going to put it aside to dry or you can dry it if you have a tool that you like to use. I'm going to use some rub-on transfers to decorate these little pots. Yes, I love this idea. So you can cut off the little miniatures that you like to fit on your little pots. I did thrift mine, but you could probably find something at the Dollar Tree or the craft store. Just watch your sales so you be sure that you save as much money as you can on your projects. I'm going to press these down on the pots. And then using my fingernail and using a popsicle stick, whatever you have, you can press those down. Now, I should have been a little more careful. I still had some glue sticky on my fingertips. And if you touch the underside of these transfers, these little rub ons they will stick to you. So there are some sections you can see on my fingers <laughs> where I have little pieces that are missing. The pots don't have every bit of what they're supposed to have because I'm wearing them on my fingertips. But that's okay, it's rustic looking. I don't mind that. So I use two pieces on this one, one on the lip of the pot or the top ring, and then one on the bottom. And this may be my favorite pot. I don't know. The one with the roses is pretty too. But they're really super cute. See my fingers? And I cut my thumb in another project. No worries though. Alright, so I want to rough them up a little bit more since I already kind of shredded them when I put them on. I'm just going to use my sanding block to do that. Just kind of blend it out. Give it a little scruffiness. Um, if you are somebody from my channel you already know how I love rustic and if you're from Jackie's channel welcome 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 over I'm so glad to have you here I would love it if you would subscribe if you would like to see more budget friendly DIYs for me I would love to show you that all right so now you're gonna stick these down on your little palette you can use E6000 whatever type of glue that you want to use for this but hot glue works best for me my tear tray is going to be in the house so it's not going to be out in the weather it's the glue is going to work fine the hot glue will work fine so so far this is what we have and because of the way i put my pot on the bottom it could actually stand by itself without anything on the back but just in case this is what you can do you can use a block on the back or you could use the squares on the back you can use a jingle block whatever you have to give it a little extra support i'm going to cut down my little foam here and i'm going to press this into each one of my pots because of course, we have to have some beautiful flowers in there, right? Press that down in there. And then I'm just gonna start taking this pick apart. I'm gonna pull all of the little stuff off and the little parts that are on top, I love these little yellow pieces. And I thought these would be the perfect things to be in these pots. So I'm taking the little yellow pieces and just pressing those in. And I want to try to have basically the same look in every pot, but you don't have to. You can mix it up. You can use different flowers. You can use, if you just wanted to use greenery, you could. If you had tiny succulents, you could do that. You know, just as some ideas for you. You can mix your bits up. If you collect all of your scraps from your florals, like I do, in a little box or a bowl, then you can just use that bunch of things in this project because they're just little bitty pieces they're tiny they're miniature and you see how it looks so far i love that they look like little wildflowers growing in there just a simple pretty little rustic cottagey look to me oh and those those little rub-ons really did make those pots look perfect you could paint your pots if you prefer that and you can use any type of rub on that you like if you decide you don't like the ones that I went with. So taking another little tiny bird, he's gonna sit on the fence. How about that? Perfect. Tear trade DIY number seven. I'm gonna use that same plaster paint for this super easy little project here. I'm going to tap in and dry brush this on every side of these little squares now I don't recall if I got these squares from the thrift store or if they came from Dollar Tree because 
They were not in their original packaging. They were in a Ziploc bag in my craft stash. But I'm sure you could find something close to it. As a matter of fact, I saw that Dollar Tree is carrying, they look like little dice in the crafter section now, and that would be even better than what I'm using. But that's what I mean. This is inspiration for you. You take it and run with it. Once it is dry, I'm gonna take these really pretty, I guess they're like eucalyptus transfers, little rub-ons, and I'm just going to put those on this block. I have found that it's easier to cut the pieces off that I'm going to use because I like to try to hold them in place. If you don't hold the little plastic down or the little, um, yeah, the little plastic sheet that's on top, sometimes the transfer can jump around a bit and then you'll get little skips in your pattern and little um, lines and, you know, like a little disturbance in your pattern. So if that doesn't bother you, that is absolutely fine. Um, but, you know, Just do your best to make it as good as you like it. And then of course, if you do make a mistake, you could always go back with your sanding block and rub all over the top on each little surface and then it will look like you did it on purpose. Mm-hmm, yeah, little tip to you there. So there's our first one down. And these fit nicely and remember you can cut these. They're just like little stickers. So if anything overhangs and you don't want to use it just cut it off you know trim it down if, if you don't want to waste anything just trim it down and then you can use your scraps on another project later i have definitely used transfer scraps on other projects so just hang on to them do you have a big crafting area do you have like a she shed or a garage or a place that you use i craft in my basement uh, it's a big basement, so I have a lot of room, but I'm in the process of cleaning it right now because it is a mess. I'm a messy crafter. But there you have it. And you can see that I did pretty good on this one, but on some of the sides, there's a little, little mess up. Tear Tray DIY number eight. Now I'm going to do my own little spin on a garland a beaded garland. I'm going to take, I have a big collection of beads. You see my beads, aren't they beautiful? Um, I'm going to take a piece of white. It's like a rope or a cording, but you can use jute. You can use any color of cording that you want, whatever you want to use for your decor. Hey, maybe if you're doing lemon theme, you could do the little yellow and white baker's twine. That would be pretty, or bees, that would be pretty. But I decided to use three colors of wood. Again, this is rustic for me because I like rustic, but you don't have to do this. You can use any color you like. I'm just gonna create my pattern over and over again, dark to the lightest. Just like that. I have already got it tied down to my little antique doily down there. Once I get all my beads on, I'm gonna go back through that original hole that I had where I tied my first end, and I'm going to tie it around the bottom of this one. And so now, rather than just having a strand of it hanging down with something or a tassel or something on the end, I've got it where it's all connected together and you can actually hang it from something on your tear tray. So if you have a knob on the top of your tear tray, you can hang it right off of that or you can just lay it down. I think it's pretty, what do you think? Tear Tray DIY number nine. I'm going to use a candle topper. That's right, this is the top of a candle jar. And some more of those same rub-ons. I'm gonna cut this middle piece off because it's gonna be the perfect size for this lid. I'm gonna use my heat gun to take that off. I love this thing, it has saved me so much time, I don't have to scrape anymore. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and figure out how I wanna lay this down. I'm kinda looking at my wood, the grain of the wood to see how I want this to go on here. That is not important. It just, in my OCD mind, I want it to look a certain way. So that's why I'm doing it, but you do it however you like. And you don't have to use a wood. If you don't have a wood top, you can use 
Bath and Body Works top. You could spray paint it any color you want and then put your rub on. Perfect. That's easy, isn't it? And it's something you already had at home. So I'm just going to press it down really well. I'm just going back over with my fingers to make sure everything's stuck down nicely. And I decided that I wanted to add a B right in the middle of my wreath. I mean, why not? If we're going to try to convince anybody that it's live greenery, we got to have a live insect in there, don't we? And why not a bee? I love bees. Jackie loves bees too. You got to check out her bee video. Nice. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of press that down with my fingernail, right? Sort of in the center, like it's flying around in there. Confused, probably, because there's no flowers in my eucalyptus wreath. But there you go. I like that. Looks like it belongs in there, doesn't it? So mix and match those, too. You can definitely mix and match your transfers. Now, to make it stand, because I want this to be a little tear tray sign, I'm going to add some hot glue on a block right on the deck. And I'm going to embellish it with some of this braided twine. Mine came from Amazon, but you can now get beautiful twine in three packs at Dollar Tree. Yes, go and get some before it sells out because I'm telling you it's got to be a hot item. Dollar Tree knows what we like. Okay, so I'm just going to use this to go all the way around this largest edge. So the top edge, I'm going to go around with this beautiful jute and cord braid. I just thought it would be nice to kind of trim it out. I don't necessarily want it to scream that it came from, you know, thrifted materials. And now it will almost look like it was store-bought. And I love that. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. I'm going to add a little bow to the top. So we're going to do a shoelace bow. Very simple. You're just going to make two little loops, wrap them around each other, and then you can adjust the size of your loops by pulling down the tails. So get it the right size. Whatever size that you like is going to be the right size. There's no wrong in crafting. And then with a the little hot glue, I'm just going to attach it to the top. You can do it to the center, the side, the bottom. Mine's just going to be right on the top of the cord that's already there. Isn't that sweet? This is nice. You could even call this farmhouse if you wanted. I'm just going to trim off a little extra. I always like to look at my projects one last time before I call it a day. And I like the look. That's nice. Yeah, I think that's good, just like that. Tear tray DIY number 10. We're gonna make a mini tray to go on our tear tray. Yep, that's right. We're gonna use some little, these little dollar store jingle blocks. We're gonna use whatever beads you like. I'm using a beautiful green color. We're gonna start by just making a little base, I guess you could say. And I'm just using my glue to place these together. You can use wood glue if you want, but I'd like to get my projects done quickly so that I can share them with you. So we're going to use the quickest option, which is the hot glue. Now we have a little base and we need to upholster our base. So I've got some of this thrifted fabric. I got a bunch of it, just a big piece. I've used it in other projects and now I'm using it again here and I love it. I'm going to just wrap this sort of like a present, maybe. I'm going to start from one side. Press that down. Protect your fingers. Don't forget. I'm still using the cool glue. I'm going to trim off a little bit because now I know what size I think I'm going to need here. And it is not going to be perfectly neat on the bottom, but I'm not going for perfection on the bottom of my project. I'm just not doing it. But if you would like to, you certainly can trim that down so that it looks like the other side. I'm just going to overlap this one. Pull it nicely. I don't want to distort my stripes, so I'm trying to be conscious of that. And then, once that is glued down, I'm going to start 
kind of deciding how I want to fold over and glue my edges. So this is always kind of a process where I'm trying to decide how I want to do something and the best way to show you how to do something. So that was not the way that I want to show you. We're going to notch it out instead. And I think this is going to be a lot better. It's going to be less bulky and I think easier for you to understand. So you see we just notched out that section. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to notch it out just on the bottom part. I got a little bit of glue on my scissors so now they're I need to clean them up so they'll cut nicely again. But you see how it's notched? Fold it down with a little hot glue there. So you're going to press it down into the hot glue. And then that little triangle part there, a little envelope flap, we're going to fold it over just like that. So I'm going to add a little more hot glue across the bottom, fold it, now go to the other side, same process, add a little hot glue, fold it, a little more glue, and then fold that over. And then you can tack it down on the bottom as well or trim it off. We're going to use the beads as feet. So I'm just going to start in my corner. I'm using my fingers and my thumb to try to center where I want them to be so they're placed in the right area on each corner, the same distance from the corner. I'm gluing my fingers down. It's on the cool temperature though, so it's okay. I didn't burn myself. And then I'm going to do the third corner and then one more corner. And we have a little riser. You can put a little candle on here, a little flickering candle, definitely not a, a real flame candle, but a flameless candle. Or you can put your little block on there like I'm gonna do. So easy. All right, we did 10 summer tiered tray projects. I have added a string of lights to my mushrooms, which I love. You can do the same thing. Put your string of lights in there and just put the little battery pack on the back. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you're not already a subscriber. I'm very happy to have all of Jackie's family over here watching my videos. I'm going to put the link to her video in the description box below and for her channel. So if you are from my channel, I would love it if you would go and support my friend Jackie. She works very hard on her projects and I really think you'll like what she's doing on her channel. Thank you so much to all my subscribers who have been here. New ones, old ones, you know I love you, and you know that I believe in you. You can definitely do these projects. You don't have to do it the same way I do it. Take your inspiration from it and run with it. I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. It helps my channel tremendously. It tells YouTube that I've worked hard and that they see my effort, and I appreciate it. I had so much fun doing this video and this collaboration with Jackie. Thank you all for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye!